All right, a lot of talk about total knee extension at the moment. So I thought I'd explain a little bit more about the two options I showed you in the knee course. Now, it involves using one of these and using one of those, but they're advanced exercises for total knee extension. We're gonna to come to that in a minute. I thought I'd go back a track, go back in time, and we'll show you what you should be doing early on to get to this advanced stuff. So let's have a look at that. Most of the time, when people are doing total knee extension work or you know, VMO extension or quads work, they're doing it on something like this, okay, and they're pushing down. Now that's all well and good, and you should be doing this sort of stuff post-surgical, you should be doing it post-injury where you can't load the knee up too much, where you've got a bit of patellofemoral pain, where you're, you're basically pushing down onto something to activate your quad. So you're trying to go for knee extension. Now obviously, with something like this, you're not gonna get total knee extension. Now some people don't get the quad squeeze there, and they need something to push against. So if you've got that's total knee extension, right? If you go full extension like that, and you'll get your quad squeeze there, okay? But that's just activating it, right? That's just getting it going if it's sort of deactivated from pain, inflammation, surgery, that sort of thing. And that's your first stage. You've got to advance from that. You've got to do some strength work, some resistance. That's why people put something like this underneath to push down on. But with this, of course, you can't get total knee extension, okay? They might start doing knee extension. All right, and that's good because it's functional. Again, that is for early on to try and get that move better. So you're using the quads to extend the knee in an open chain position. Now again, no load through there. Now, when you're early on, putting load down there might give you some shear forces, so what are you gonna do? What you do is total knee extension in standing when you can tolerate it. And of course, the first one's gonna be your band. Like I said, we're gonna to come to the ball, the little mini ball and the Swiss ball in a moment. I just want to drill through the band, and I've done quite a few videos on this, but this is, you know, this is one of the best things to start with, and this one should be done before the ball. So don't make the mistake of going through the ball one, because that's way harder. So the band one, and that's a power band, I mean, this is just a, a mid-sized power band, and remember with this one, you're working on total knee extension, so working on trying to extend the knee. So this band needs to be enough resistance up on the hammy here, so when I close my knee straight, I switch my quads on, and the resistance here is work for the quad. So it's isometric loading for the quads. So you're gonna get much better quad strengthening in an isometric position when you use the band than doing it on the floor pushing down. But you've gotta be able to tolerate standing, okay? So it is further down the track when you're recovering because you've gotta be able to stand on the knee and it can't be inflamed and sore when you're doing that. So this is really, really good stuff. You can mix it up between doing sort of three second holds, doing lots of repetitions with that, or longer 10 second holds, even up to 30 second holds to really get the pump on that. But that's the band one. Today is all about the balls. So this little ball here, this little Pilates or physio ball, okay? Now these ones, you don't have to buy one of these ones, you can just get a little $2 shop one where it's a little squidgy ball, like a kid's ball, as long as it's got something that's squishy, okay? You can't have it rock hard, but otherwise you won't be able to push against it. Now this one, you push against the wall. Now, it's sort of like the band. The band one, though, is you're pushing back. And you, the weight is in front of you, so you're like pulling, okay? So that you're closing the knee and pushing the knee straight, but you're doing a pulling action with the resistance. This one is a pushing action. So I think it's a lot better. You get a lot better quads. You start, you start using this compared to the band, way bit stronger quads activation through the front, but you have to be strong enough to handle it. So build some strength up with that, then move to this. This one, again, vary it, up, vary it up a little bit. I mean, sometimes people go behind the knee, sometimes they sort of go up on the hamstring to get the knee shut, because if, if you haven't got enough power, you can't get the knee shut if it's sort of there, it sort of blocks it a little bit. The other thing too, make, don't make the mistake of putting your foot right back there and then realizing you can't get your knee straight because the ball's in the way, okay? Unless you're really strong and you can squash that ball or the ball's really soft. So I'd move that leg away. Just, you'll have to vary this a little bit. Get that ball in the right position, okay? And then this leg here doesn't do too much, but you can put a bit of weight through that other front leg. You're gonna drive your heel down and slam that knee straight and then get that quad on. So you're locking your knee into extension now to do that, I'm doing way more work here, holding that ball in a squeeze, 
than I do with the band. Okay, it's a lot harder for me to do. The other good thing about this is once you've got that position, then you can actually wind up and push harder and harder and harder because you've got a solid resistance, okay? With the band, the resistance keeps stretching and stretching and stretching, okay? So you don't just sort of hit that end point. Here, you hit the end point, and I've blocked it. I can't go any further, and I can just keep powering through into that ball, which makes me look really hard there, and I fatigue massively in there. But you've got to be careful. You can't afford any pinching sort of pain in the front. So if you've still got that point where you're recovering from injury or surgery or patellofemoral pain, and you get that pinching in the front of the knee when you shut your knee, well, this one's not for you. You better go backwards a step. Okay, but if you can get to that point, you have to play around with it. You have to sort of vary it, change legs, see what the good leg can do, you can work out how much power that one's got to see where you're at. But really work on foot positioning and ball positioning through there and body positioning, and then work on trying to straighten that as hard as you possibly can. Once you've got it locked straight, then spend, say, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, Build to 30, build to a minute if you can, and build up your isometric strength, because trust me, that is gonna help you heaps with doing single leg squats, full squats, lunges, all that sort of thing. You're gonna get some more quad strength to do those exercises. So that's the ball, but hey, what if you haven't got one of these, right? What if you're in the gym, chuck that away, and all you've got is a big ball like this. This is not a bad alternative. I would always go for the smaller ball because you can put more power through it. But if you're stuck and you haven't got a little ball or you're waiting for a little ball and you've got one of these, then you can use one of these. So put that same sort of spot. Now this is where you really have to work out where your foot's going. If I put my foot far too back, I can't push on it, okay? So watch where that foot is and you have to get that ball either up on the hamstring like that or down a bit, just so you get, you've got some pressure. You can see how I can push it there. And then I'll have to push through this leg probably a little bit more because that ball is tough and strong. So I've got to go and push that ball straight. And again, if I work hard enough, I can nearly just about get the same sort of pressure like I do with that one. It's just more difficult, okay? It's not as easy, but hey, it's the next best thing. And if it's all you've got, then go use this ball like this and you'll find that it's a really good tool to advance your total knee extension. Now, if you don't have anything like that, you're at home, you could roll up a pillow. I probably wouldn't use a towel, because a towel you can't really squash. Roll up a pillow, so it's squashy, push that against the wall. That's your third best option. See how you got that? See you next time.